Hi, Ben here with Amtax Equipment Repair Shop Online. The prior video that I posted for you pretty much kind of uh, explained how the pump produces pressure. Now, pumps are designed to produce as much as pressure to the point that they can even self destruct themselves. Now, you do have pumps that are designed to do 1000 psi max, 2000, 2500, 4000, of course, higher and higher. Now, what allows a pump to maintain its pressure if you don't have a regulator in between the plumbing system and the uh, pump itself, pressure could rise to the point that virtually can explode the head of the pump and also, of course, disintegrate the whole entire pump. But what prevents it from doing is using a device called regulator, pressure regulator, or BPR valve, or and water valve, which they're all designed to handle so much PSI, like this one is designed to do 3600 PSI. Of course, this one is a simpler one, a much weaker one, which is designed to do up to 2000. You can always pep them up to go to about uh, 2500 PSI. But what allows a pump to regulate and, the, and the control its pressure, so in case if you set it at 600, it remains 600. If you set it at 1000, it's gonna remain 1000, it's not gonna go any higher. It is because of this screen. Because every unloader or every pressure regulator has a spring inside. With this spring, it is designed to handle so much pressure as far as getting jammed. So by having this inside of the cap, and of course, as it sits around this thrust plate, it pushes against a piston inside of here, which of course, this piston, let me put this back together, Coming this way, the spring pushes against the thrust plate. The thrust plate pushes against the piston. And of course, you do have this disc, which is located down here, and it pushes against it. Now, this is how it's, this thing is set up, this whole regulator is set up. So what allows it to maintain pressure? Let's draw some drawings. If this is our regulator, the one that we use on Amtex machine, and remember here you do have a spring, which of course, again, as you tie the cap, spring gets more jammed, and of course it's going to put more pressure in the back of this thrust plate, which is going to push the piston further down, and it's going to be harder for it to separate from this whole inside of this disc which allows the water to pass through but where the water goes okay so anyway we do have the water coming in from the pump with pressure as it goes here you do have the piston the one we just talked about with couple seals and you do have this disc which is located here now here's going to be your thrust plate which is this. As Remember I told you the pump can continuously make pressure and keep rising the pressure, keep going from 500 to 1000 to 2000 to 10,000 to the point that they can virtually disintegrate. So what prevents it from disintegrating? As the pressurized water enters, it pushes, it forces the spring. It all depends how this spring is designed to take what PSI. It forces the spring to go upward, but kind of contract, which allows the water to come out. And in this case, if you notice, here's the water that goes in from the pump into the regulator. As it comes out, either goes back into the pump or in some design that you see in the market, goes back to the water box that they have designed to keep the water cool. Which in this case, in our design, we do not use um, the water box, we only use a very simple dripper valve which allows a little bit of water to be extracted continuously out of this loop, these two loops which is going to be connected to the pump and a slowly drip into the tank to keep the regulator and the head of the pump cool. So, going back to the uh, operation of the regulator, it all depends on the strength of this uh, spring and the pressure as it comes in, so as we tie this, as we tie the regulator clockwise, the spring gets more jammed, it pushes the thrust plate forward, it pushes the piston, 
which is located right below the thrust plate and it, of course is going to seal the end plate here now as the, remember I told you as the pump runs it continuously the pressure rises it's going to get to the point that let's say you already have set it with the help of a gauge at 500 psi because this spring is precisionly manufactured at 500 psi this spring is jammed a little bit to the point that this piston can back up and allow some of the water to get relief out of the line either back into the pump or back into the water box that's how you keep the pressure in other words you can tie the regulator set it at 1000 psi as the pump is running and it does this positive displacement of water the pressure rises within no time reaches 1000 but because that spring it's loading the back of the piston it is it only allow it all depends on the tension that's designed for it allows a thousand psi water to come in but once the pressure remember i told you the the pump is going to keep pressurizing and keep going higher and higher but once the uh, the pressure wants to go over 1000 that's an area where the spring gets jammed back and allows some of the water to go back into the pump relieve itself so that's how you maintain pressure now this was a quick video showing you how the pressure maintenance of a system is done which basically they all come in with a spring like i said in the other case you do give them a larger um spring much stronger when it all depends what type of system you're going to be building so that pretty much explain how the pressure is regulated in our system or any system that you see out there uh, again this was a very short video educational video showing you how the pressure is regulated by a truck mount and of course uh, the next video I'm going to start uh, recording for you will be will be able to get into a repair part of the pump uh, as I promised you in the prior video until then we we'll see each other thank you